Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Also, please do check out the description section below where you can find more information about whatever it is I am talking about in each video. Many times I use that section to also add things that I probably should have said or maybe things I forgot or maybe, you know, if, if I had some type of a change of mind or a change of heart, so to speak. If you have any questions or comments or you happen to own this amp, I'd love to hear your thoughts about it. Please do post that in the description section below. Also, if you have an amp that you really love, I'd love to hear about it and hear about the uh, sound quality. I'm always interested if a amplifier is warm sounding, neutral, or bright. So please post it below. Let's get started. So before purchasing this amp, which is the Parasound New Classic 2125 V.2 THX Ultra, <laughs> THX Ultra 2, this thing has some big name. This amplifier is 150 watts a channel into eight ohms. So what I did was I printed up the owner's manual and I always like to read the owner's manual either uh, before I purchase something or uh, before I get it. So usually though, before I purchase something, I do look over the owner's manual, especially when I'm looking for certain features or certain things that I wanna make sure that it has. Uh, sometimes you find out things in the owner's manual that you would never ever know just by looking at it or by assuming that you know based on experience because manufacturers do different things to their products that other manufacturers don't do. And What I want to do first is I want to point out a few things that I kind of marked off in the manual, things that I thought were just very important for anyone to know that is uh, potentially purchasing this. So this model should never be stacked on top of another power amplifier, okay? What you wanna do is you wanna keep this someplace where it's ventilated. Um, any type of air that's stagnant is just gonna create heat. So that's really what they're saying over here with uh, the ventilation requirements. Don't stack it, remember, don't stack it. You can put it on another shelf, but don't like put one right on top of the other. This amp has a high pass filter switch. And what it says is the flat setting of the switch disconnects the filter, okay? So when it's set to flat, the filter is gonna be disconnected. Now it has a 20 hertz setting filter, which it says it filters out frequencies that are below 20 hertz at an 18 decibel per octave. It says your speakers have greater dynamic range and far less distortion when they don't receive these frequencies, which are lower than they are capable of reproducing. So yeah, I mean, most speakers can't, most speakers can't produce below 20 hertz unless it's something like this definitive tower with, with its own built-in sub. Um, you know, but I'm going to, I'm actually going to talk about this a little bit more. Let me just finish it. It says the 2125 V.2 operates more efficiently when it's not called upon to amplify very low frequencies, so you'll have more power in the range the speaker is capable of reproducing, okay? Because the 20 hertz filter also has a steep 18 decibel per octave slope, it is essentially a subsonic filter, and you probably won't notice any loss of low bass unless you're using very large speakers, okay? Um, I did try the 20 hertz filter and I tried it with the 40 hertz filter, which is next. And as soon as you flip the switch over to the 20 hertz filter, the volume drops. You would hear the volume drop. So when I connected this to my home theater receivers, I tried it on the Ankyo and I tried it on the, um, what is it, uh, the uh, Marantz. I didn't have to go in and adjust the volume leveling compared to where it was already set. I mean, maybe I would have to put it to a plus one, um, but I, I don't think that I needed to. It sounded, it sounded like it was ready to go. The volume just sounded perfect. Um, I did also use the test tones on the Ankyo just to see, and it seemed like it was exactly where it should be which is good. But when I flip the switch over to 20 hertz to filter it out, then I would have to go over there and, uh, um, what is it, a boost it up on the volume leveling control of the receiver. 
I also did notice a huge difference in, in the amount of bass sound. You could, you could really hear it. It's, it loses like so much fullness. Okay, so the 40 hertz switch position filters out bass below 40 hertz at the same 18 decibel per octave. It says, this is ideal when the, we'll call it the amp, is driving in-wall speakers or in-ceiling speakers. It says, because most of them have little useful bass output below 40, it says you'll enjoy much cleaner sound and higher undistorted volume levels. Not having to amplify bass that's inaudible with your speakers is another way the, we'll call it the amplifier, will run cooler. Um, so that's just something to consider if you are purchasing this. It is a nice feature. You know, I can definitely, I can definitely hear the sound difference. And also with music, when I flip that 20 hertz on or off. Um, with 40 hertz, it just, it just sounds a, a little bit less. But that initial flip of the switch really changes the sound um, quality. Okay, here's something else that I thought was kind of important, and there's a, there's a note over here. It says, for the coolest possible operating temperature, we recommend setting the speaker load switch to the 2 to 3 ohms, even if you are using a single pair of 8 ohm speakers. Now, I'm, I'm not an expert on this, but with receivers, when you flip your switch and you change it from the 8 ohm setting or whatever the highest setting is, it might be 6 ohms, I don't know. Um, some receivers it's like six, 6 ohms and up, set it to this, or, or, or below 6 ohms, flip the switch. Um, it typically loses something. So I'm, I'm thinking what's happening here is it's probably going to uh, cut back on whatever it cuts back on because of the change in load, so that's why it's gonna run cooler. With that said, this thing runs really, really overall cool. I mean, it gets warm, but I've, these are cursed glasses, um, I've, I've used home theater receivers that were like, you could probably cook an egg on the thing. I mean, this thing, I could have this thing on. I've, I've ran this thing for like 10 hours one day, straight, and it was just, it was, it was, it was warm. like lightly warm. So, I mean, look, there's video game systems that seem like they run hotter than this. So that'll just give you an idea. I think that, uh, you know, I think that for an amp like this, 150 watts, and also um, a class AB amp, I think it's pretty good. So this manual has a lot of information in it. Please read it. It's, it's, it's not that long. It'll take you like 10, 15, 20 minutes. Okay, so for convenience, there are three ways the model, we'll call it the amplifier, can be turned off and on. <laughs> so let me just go over those and then let me see what else I wanted to point out. So the actual specs on this before I turn this around is 150 watts times two into eight ohms, 225 watts times two into four ohms, 225 watts times two into two ohms, when the load switch is set to the two to three ohm. Okay, if it's set to mono, it's giving you 400 watts into eight ohms and 400 watts into four ohms. And it says in parentheses, if the load switch is set to the two to three ohms. The frequency response is 20 hertz to 50 kilohertz. Um, the total harmonic distortion is rated at, pull, excuse me, it's rated at 0.25% at full rated output. So remember, point, if, if it's point and a number, it's a tenth. If it's point zero and a number, it's a hundredth. And if it's point zero zero and a number, it's a thousandth. Okay, so at average listening levels, it's rated at point zero one five. So it's in the hundredths, the hundredths then at the average listening volume. This amp weighs 27 pounds, which is actually pretty good. So, um, you know, it's not too heavy. Just make sure that whatever shelf you're putting it on, if you're putting it on your entertainment rack, just make sure it can hold this type of weight. Um, you know, again, you know, it's, it's not too heavy because some amplifiers, you know, they go up to like 80, 100 pounds. So this is pretty good. Anyway, on the front, what we have is we have the uh, display and I probably should have plugged it in, but it just says left and right, and that's pretty much it. Here's your power button, 
and this is for your speaker set A, speaker set B, and we just do that, and that's how we turn it on and off. So again, power button, left and right gets, is lit up over here, and um, you know, A and B speakers, and you could, you could have both when you push them both in. I did uh, run this with the uh, definitive, the bipolar towers, the, the, the uh, 7006 model, and with the Golden Ear Aeon 3s at the same time. So I had both of these pushed in, and I tell you, sounded great. Okay, so this is the rear. So over here on the left, we have this turn on switch. Okay, so these are your options for turning this on. So with it, with it set all the way to the left, that is set to manual, which means the power button in front is going to be used to turn it on and off. When we set it to quiet, what we're doing is we're using this over here, your left and right input. Okay, so it's actually going to be sensing for volume the same way a subwoofer does and it'll turn on and off. So over here it explains that when it's set to quiet, this is the more sensitive setting, and the amp will turn on automatically with a very low level audio signal corresponding to about, it looks like one MV, which I think is millivolt. In most cases, this will be the preferred setting. If for some reason the amp never turns off, you may have some noise in your system that is false triggering the automatic turn on circuit. In this case, you should use the louder setting. Louder, it says, this is the less sensitive setting and the amp will turn on automatically with a slightly higher level audio signal corresponding to about six millivolts. It says you should first try the quiet setting. And what they do is they explain that at the beginning of most films, the sub and surround levels are often lower than the minimum level required by the audio sensing circuit. So what it's basically saying is that when movies start off, you know how they're usually quiet. You know, they're really, and even like subwoofers, subwoofers usually don't, don't turn on during intros. So, you know, what you want to do is you typically want to have it set to quiet. Um, I've been running this with it set to quiet, and I found that with it set to quiet, it works very well turning on and off. And that's without using the 12 volt trigger, which is next, because if we take the switch and we push it down, and push it all the way over, we're going to 12 volts. So here's your, over here's your 12 volt trigger. So this is your input and this is your output. Now I do have a separate video where I explain the input and output to 12 volt trigger. So check it out. And that's also how to um, connect an amplifier. Over here we have a lockout on the front panel. Okay, so this will either allow you to use the A and B speaker button switches that are on the front, or you could lock them out. So if, if you want it, so like, let's just say like, if you have like, like a child and the child's always pushing the, <laughs> you know, the uh, speaker button, you, you could lock them out. So it's kind of nice. Um, this is your input. So, you know, let's just say if you're using the preamp output on your receiver for your front left and right channel, it would go in here. If you're using your pre, if you're using your preamp output on your receiver for, um, you know, your surround backs or your, you know, your uh, height channels, whatever it might be, you'd plug them in here. Now this is an output. So this is just taking the signal that's coming in here and sending this out to something else. So let's just say if you wanted to hook up a subwoofer to this, you could. Or if you wanted to hook this up to another amp because if for some reason you want to have maybe four speakers or, or eight speakers that receive the exact same signal, you could then send this out, um, hook this up to another amplifier you know, using, using these cables, you know, a pair of these things. And, you know, that would send the same signal over to that amp. Now over here you have a level control, okay? Uh, with this, I found having the level control turned all the way up worked perfectly fine. And, you know, with that said, um, you know, based on what I previously said about when I connected this, it just seemed like it was ready to go. So the volume on the speakers seemed okay. That's what this, this level turned all the way up. If you, if you want to make it lower, if you want to reduce it, you can. Right, so the next thing is that high pass filter, um, which is up here. This is that, that 20 hertz 
then 40 hertz cutoff, so that's right here. And this is to run your speakers in stereo or mono. Now these are your inputs for your, um, for your speakers. These feel pretty good, they feel pretty sturdy. I don't really have any issues with them. I'm not expecting too much though at the price because this thing sells for like $600. Of course, if you get it on sale, it'll be even cheaper. Um, now this is your um, impedance switch. So if you're running four to eight ohms, you, you leave it where it is. And it says for two to three ohms, push it that way. And that's what the instruction says. And again, this is a THX Ultra 2 certified amp. So usually things that have the THX certification are pretty good. Uh, I don't think I've ever used anything that was THX and I was like, wow, this is really bad. Um, but, you know, for $600, even with the THX certification, you know, it's probably not going to sound like a $3,000 amp that has no THX certification. But, I mean, at this price point, I think it's nice to have the THX certification. Okay, so that's pretty much the back of it. I'm going to get my notes and talk about the rest. We talked about the low pass filter and how the volume does drop a bit and you'll hear a, a difference in the fullness as soon as you flip it to 20 hertz. Um, another thing that I do want to point out about this amp is that they suggest to unplug this before you hook anything up. So make sure that you unplug it, it's a good idea. Because if you're connecting things and then you get that like sound through your speakers, that's not good, you don't want that. That can happen with you know, home theater receivers, it could happen with amps. Uh, you know, try to unplug it, make sure it's off, because if that happens, uh, you know, it, it, it could, you know, um, harm the speakers um, and p potentially even the amp. Parasound with the 20 hertz filter not turned on, so let's say no filter, okay? It has deep lows. It has deep lows, and you could tell that this has good power, okay? Now, I do want to say something about the tonal quality of it. This is a warm sounding amplifier, okay? It's warmer than the Marantz 7013. When I ran this using the definitive Bipolar Towers, the 9060s that I have in the other room, which I absolutely love, the tonal quality of this is it's more it's 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 a it's a little bit more laid back in the mid range. The mid range is more reserved, a little bit more pulled back than the Marantz. I prefer the Marantz sound better, okay, because there's more detail in the like that snare drum region, that vocal region. It's not that much, but it's enough that when I'm listening to music, it makes enough of a difference for me, okay? Now, that's with those speakers, okay? The Definitive 9060 Towers, which are a really, really nice sounding speaker. Um, the overall depth of this, you could hear, I mean, you could hear the extra 25 watts. I could hear that th this definitely had an extra 25 watts. It just, it, it sounds a little bit, the sound was just a little bit stronger. But if I didn't know that this had 25 more watts, I would still be leaning towards the Marantz. Now, the, now I ran the Marantz on the pure mode, so it was giving, it's supposed to put out 125 watts. And with Marantz, um, it has a 70% guarantee when it's in five channel mode that you're going to get uh, at a minimum 70, at least 70% of the wattage that they rated into, into two channels. So with that said, you know, I'm, I'm getting the 125 watts, but also the definitive towers have the built in subs in each of them. So really the receiver, um, and the, um, and the amp only has to power those mid frequencies and those high frequencies. So it's not, you know, it doesn't have to power the bass, but I could still hear the difference because when I do hook this up, you know, um, you know, you could, you could just hear it because the uh, definitive towers are going to scale, you know, the, the power of the sound is going to scale with the uh, power of the amplifier. This, this particular amp, it could be a very good match in a Marantz system, okay? Probably not a Denon because the Denon is 
kind of on the opposite end. It's a very bright, clear sounding amp. So I think that this would not be a good match for somebody that appreciates a Denon sound as well. Okay, so if you appreciate Denon, this is probably not a good match. If you like Marantz, this could be more it. But again, it seems it's, it's a little bit warmer sounding than the Marantz as well. Let's see, the, the sound stage on this, um, the sound stage, that's better. The sound stage is pretty standard. It sounds to me like most home theater receivers sound. Um, you know, it's not, it's not anything special like the sound stage that's on the NAD, the, um, the C388 that I did the review of. Um, it doesn't quite have like a special sounding sound stage. It just, it seems pretty standard. Now, if you, if you have a home theater receiver that say it's like, you know, 80 watts a channel in your preamp outputs or it's 50 watts and you have preamp outputs or, you know, even if it's, let's just say it's, you know, 110 watts in your preamp outputs, you know, hooking this up to it might make a big improvement as long as the uh, tonal quality matches well with your receiver and also your speakers, okay? Next thing is this makes these junky things sound great. And I say junky because I don't want everybody thinking, oh, I'm going to go run out and buy these now. <laughs> um, it's not to say that this is terribly horrible for the price. I think right now you could pick these things up for like $150 or $170 for the pair. Um, but they were always very forward sounding, very bright sounding. Um, tweeter and this Parasound New Classic THX Ultra 2 2125 V.2 <laughs> amplifier makes these sound really good. They actually do, they sound good with this. So, if you own speakers from the Polk Monona 2 series, which is this, and I believe what is it, the TSI series, which I they sound like the same. It's almost just like a repackaging or whatever the other Polk ones that sounded like the Monitor 2s or maybe the Monitor 1s. I don't remember what the Monitor 1s sounded like, but I think the TSI were the ones that were like this. I think they're like the same price too. Anyway, um, if you own Polk Monitor speakers, this would be a great amp to get because I've never heard this speaker sound full. I never heard it sound full and the laid back or pulled back sound of the vocals, um, cymbals, uh, you know, snare drum, stuff like that. It just helps to balance out what the Polk audio, um, you know, has, uh, I guess you could say like an, like an imbalance. Okay. Um, like this, this Polk audio, I would hate to hear it on, um, on a bright sounding amp, I really would because when I listen to it on the NAD uh, C388, <laughs> all these numbers, um, you know, it, 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 it magnified, it magnified the, you know, the sharpness of, of the speaker. <clears throat> so the Parasound amplifier with the definitive Bipolar Towers, the old series, the 7006. It sounds good, but I would like it to have more mid-range, more vocals, just, just a little bit more upfront with those or be a little bit more clear sounding. Again, this, this is very warm. So while I'm thinking of it, I would not pair this with one of the uh, Paradigm uh, towers, like I did the review of what is it, the 8000R or 8000F or whatever that one was. Um, it would just be too warm. <laughs> it would just, I mean, I, I couldn't even picture it. Um, this would be a good amp for, let's just say, the Monitor Bronze series. When I did the review of that, check it out. The one that has the two 8 inch woofers. This, I think, would be a very nice match for those. Um, this with the, uh, the Golden Ear, um, uh, the, uh, the Aeon threes, it sounds pretty good um, because the Golden Ear has a pretty 
pretty nice uh, clear sounding overall mid-range and, and treble but I would like to see this being a little bit more clear when connected to two other golden ears um, you know again I mentioned the uh, definitive the bipolar 9060 towers uh, you know it, it sounds good on those I, I, I can't say that I just like the sound of the Marantz a little bit more and what else did I hook this up to? Um, I know I hooked this up to something else. Um, the oh, uh, the Dyn Audio, uh, the M20, uh, uh, the Emit M20, or whatever it is. This 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 ruined that speaker. <laughs> the combination was just was just way too warm. Um, I didn't care for it at all. So you know that's that's really uh, the logic uh, behind this. I would actually maybe hook this up to one of the Focals Focal. Focal, it's, as I know, I, I, you know, I call it focal, <laughs> because that's the easy way. I think that the, the Parasound would be good with the Bowers and Wilkins, um, the 600 series, because I think it would help to calm down that tweeter, which I found to be just a, uh, um, a sizzling machine. <laughs> it just, I felt like that thing just never stopped sizzling. So I think that this would be good, because this would help to just calm it down a bit. Um, so if possibly if you own those and you're kind of like, you know, you're not so thrilled with it. Um, I think this with uh, the PSB, PSB, can't remember the name, PSB, but I did the review of it. I think this would be a good match for it. And maybe the Focals, which I called the Focals. <laughs> um, I think that this would also be a good match for it because what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to match this up with speakers that the tweeter is brighter or experience, I experience, you know, brightness, sharpness, or maybe it's just very clear sounding. So this might be something that, you know, you would want to try with it. I probably would not want to connect this to the Polk Audio Signature Series or the Polk Audio RTI Series because I find them to be kind of similar sounding. When I, when I had the uh, uh, signatures, um, I felt like I kind of just had the RTIs, which I still have. So, um, you know, I don't think I would want to connect this to those. I could be totally wrong, but those Polks, I would prefer something that's a little bit more neutral or a little bit more bright. So hopefully that give you, um, you, you know, that gave you a little bit of a, um, Comparison up uh, maybe the the, uh, the SVS which is sitting over here. Um, I didn't hook it up to the SVS, but usually the SVS compared to the uh, definitives, it's usually like the definitive is a little bit sharper, whereas the SVS I find like the mid range is just a little bit better than the definitive, like tiny 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 bit. But I feel like that's like the you know the difference between the two. You know maybe a speaker that has a horn tweeter. I would think horn tweeter speakers that are very sharp sounding, maybe piercing. Uh, you know, again, if, if you already own these type of speakers and, you know, you, you know you're kind of not so happy with them because they're too sharp or too bright, then I think it might be worth it to pick this up, hook this up to your receiver as long as you have the preamp outputs and, you know, give it a try and just make sure that you have a good return policy, uh, whether it's two weeks or, or, or a month or whatever or more. Just, you know, make sure you can, you know, take it back in case if you take it home and it makes your speakers that were already kind of warmish even warmer. Well, that's about all I have for this amplifier. Um, you know, at the, at the price of $600 and if you could get it on sale and potentially a good sale, then, you know, it might, it might really be worth it. I think that um, probably the main reason for purchasing this would be to add some extra power to a home theater receiver. Um, you know, also potentially if the home theater receiver is kind of lower powered by adding a amplifier to it, what you're doing is you're taking some of the load off of the receiver so the receiver can put more of the power towards the remaining speakers. If you have any questions or comments, please post them in the comment section below. Again, if you have this amplifier or if you have another amplifier that you really enjoy, I'd love to hear about it. I'm always curious about amplifiers and the tonal quality and what speakers they match well with. Thank you for watching.